Welcome to the Cheating Secrets channel. We hope you enjoy today's story. Hello, Francis. I'm home. Cheerfully exclaimed my wife from the doorway, returning from the office. We both work at the same university. She in the property management department and I in the physics department. I'm in the kitchen, I replied without much enthusiasm. What are you doing home so EA? Her question hung in the air and her voice faltered when she saw my suitcases next to the internal door leading to our attached garage. Her head slowly turned towards me, and she looked at me puzzled. What's going on? Came the question. Are you going somewhere? Seems like a lot of luggage for a last-minute conference, she tried to joke. Oddly enough, I shrugged. In all the time I've been teaching quantum mechanics lectures, it seems like the first time I'm actually bringing my work home. Oh. Really, I theatrically waved my hand. I've been grading student papers, conducting classes via Zoom, but real, darn it, quantum theory. No, this is a first for me. She clearly looked unpleasantly surprised by the degree of venom in my words and their inherently rude nature. I, listen, I don't understand what you mean and why you're using such expressions. What does quantum mechanics have to do with this, with anything? I widened my eyes and stared at her in feigned horror. What does it have to do with anything? I repeated, absolutely everything. Quantum mechanics literally explains how everything works, from your mobile phone to your own body and everything in this world in general. Remember how I explained Schrodinger's cat paradox to you? My abrupt change of topic caught her off guard. She hesitated for a moment, trying to recall what I had once explained to her and then responded. Hmm, yes. Something about a cat inside a box, right? Since you can't interact with the cat, you have to make assumptions about whether it's alive or dead. Thus, from a physics perspective, you're saying it's both, to some degree, until you open the box and find out. Very good. I praised her. We call this strange state superposition. And what about quantum entanglement? She pursed her lips and shook her head. I remember you mentioning it when I asked about quantum computers, but I forgot what it was about. And honestly, it didn't make sense to me. Listen, why are we talking about this now? What does all of this have to do with your luggage? I leaned back in my chair, gesturing invitingly to the one on the opposite side of the table. She approached and sat down across from me. In my laboratory, I announced, we have a device that creates entangled electrons in a superposition state. Both electrons can be in either of two states, or even both simultaneously, but as soon as we start testing one of them to determine its state, the other instantly loses its superposition. Somehow, measuring the state A affects the state B. Even now, this explanation amused me, and I couldn't help but smile. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. Carol, my wife, just stared at me blankly, probably wondering why on earth I was going on about these complex and incomprehensible matters to her. Luggage? She interjected impatiently. I'm getting there. He snapped to here. Straightening up instantly, she recoiled in surprise. Then I continued my explanation. When we got married, our lives became intertwined. Your state affected mine, and vice versa. Right? I saw the color draining from her cheeks. Why yes, but... She mumbled. Let me finish my explanation in my own way, please. I interrupted her. She leaned back in her chair, looking far from happy. Meanwhile, I calmly continued, So, if we were to consider my marital status in purely quantum mechanical terms, then I am like an entangled particle in a superposition state. And, to a significant extent, depending on your actions, my situation will instantly transition into one of two states. Carol, currently not in a superposition but utterly bewildered, shook her head again in desperation. I don't understand. What actions? What situation? What in the world are you talking about? States? I softened my tone. It's simple. If you're the unfaithful slut I think you are, I pushed a bulky envelope across the table towards her. Then I'm a lonely man who will soon be divorcing. On the other hand, I continued. If you can explain one phone call that happened today at lunch, well, then I'm a repentant husband who will unpack those suitcases and invite you to dinner to apologize. 
I narrowed my eyes and fixed a piercing gaze on her across the kitchen table. Carol first stared at the envelope as if it were a venomous snake poised within striking distance, but then she finally shifted her gaze to me. Tomorrow you're leaving for your annual conference. On Valentine's Day, it will be our first separation in six years of living together and four years of officially being husband and wife, I continued. I saw her swallow nervously, and her eyes darted away for a moment. I called the conference hotel to arrange for a bouquet of roses to be delivered to your room. You know, a lovely romantic gift for my loving wife. Carol shifted awkwardly, turning slightly as if sitting straight was uncomfortable for her. Except the lady at the front desk innocently assumed I was the man with whom you shared your room, and then she complimented me, saying that flowers are a wonderful gesture and that she'll personally ensure the bouquet is delivered to your room as a surprise while both of you are in the conference hall. Carol, stuttering, tried to mumble something that was supposed to sound like a plausible explanation. I raised my hand, interrupting her babbling, and semi-questioningly stated, Obviously, you and Craig settled in room 238. As usual, right? She sat silently, staring at her hands and nervously twisting the ring on her finger, clearly not wanting to start the conversation first. Well, what about Craig? I had to prompt her. Carol's voice was steady as she replied, We studied together at university. We went on a few dates, slept together a couple of times. But there wasn't any real spark between us, just casual sex. How long ago? I asked curtly. She sighed heavily. At the conference four years ago, I was surprised to see him there. He started working in a similar position at the housing association, and our paths crossed by chance. Now she looked at me seriously. There was no premeditation or conspiracy. Believe at least that, if you don't believe anything else. Then she looked down at her hands again, which lay powerless on the table. We sat next to each other during the day sessions, and in the evening we went for drinks to make up for lost time. Tears started rolling down her cheeks. We had a few drinks and started flirting, and then, then I went back to his room for coffee, and, at this point, she raised her tear moistened eyes and, at least, she had the courage to meet my gaze. And I stayed the night. Carol sniffled and wiped her eyes. I, still leaning back in my chair with my arms crossed over my chest, didn't add anything to her confession. I got married recently, she said, and he was engaged. We both felt guilty, but we decided that if you never found out, no one would get hurt. At that moment, I intervened. There was a chance that if you had confessed to me back then, I might have forgiven you. I'm not sure about that, but there was a chance. But this year? On damn Valentine's Day? She looked miserable and bit her lip, nodding. The next year we had separate rooms, but the excitement of this secret, just once a year, the meeting was too strong to resist, and, and we slept together again. Last year I booked a standard room, they always have double occupancy, and he paid the extra charge for accommodation with his card. This year was supposed to be the last. Craig's wife just told him she's pregnant, and we talked about starting a family. So, her quiet voice trailed off, and Carol's eyes filled with tears again. She looked at me, seemingly hoping that somehow what she said would soften her betrayal. I was about to put her in her place when suddenly her phone rang. She reached into her bag to silence the call, but as she fumbled for the chirping gadget, she saw who was trying to reach her. Carol's eyes widened in surprise. This is Craig, she sniffed. But he knows he's not supposed to call me when I'm at home. What we did, it was only at the conference. And we never laughed at you or his wife. It was just meaningless sex. We never called each other, she repeated with frustrated bewilderment. Maybe he's trying to warn you that I already know about you too, I speculated. But how could he know that? She asked, but then stumbled. Her breath caught as realization hit her mind. You? You told his wife? She whispered in horror, managing to press the cancel button before that. I nodded affirmatively. Yeah, Jenna and I had a pretty long conversation earlier today. Obviously, starting a family was supposed to mean the end of his little side adventures. It seems my information was the final straw for her. In fact, when we talked, she mentioned ending the relationship. Jenna has no intention of becoming a single mother. 
How did you find her? She asked quietly. It was very simple. I told the administrator that I planned to order champagne for my table, considering it's Valentine's Day, but I wasn't sure which card to use for the payment. They gave me a choice. Either your corporate card or one under a Mr. Datton's name. I told them I'd decide later and hung up. Searching by surname in the online delegate list took just a few moments. Then, after checking his social media profile, I found Craig Datton with Jenna as his significant other. As soon as I saw that he attended the same university at the same time as you, I was sure I hit the bullseye. I immediately messaged Jenna. She called me back, and we shared our woes. Carol's phone rang again. She looked at me questioningly. Go ahead. I encouraged her with a smile. Answer it. She pressed accept and, giving me a quick glance, activated the loudspeaker. What do you want, Craig? She asked with a colorless, almost tired voice. You know we don't do this. Kaz, this is urgent. His voice came through the receiver, while Carol grimaced upon hearing the nickname she hated. His speaker-enhanced spy whisper echoed through our kitchen. Listen, Jenna knows about our arrangement. She even mentioned your husband by name. But, damn, I don't understand how she could find out. Carol furrowed her brows in distress, silently urging me to come to her aid. But this was her own crappy problem that she needed to deal with on her own. Probably because it was him who told her about us, she sighed grimly. How? From where? What does he, what does he know? He demanded details. Can we come up with an explanation they'll buy? I highly doubt it, my wife snorted. Considering I just told him everything. As she said this, Carol watched as I started composing a message on my phone. Actually, she continued quite insightfully. I'm almost certain he's now messaging Jenna with the latest news. What? This time. Abandoning caution and the conspiratorial tone, he yelled into the receiver. You confess to him? She just shrugged, although her lover couldn't see her. He found out about us when he tried to do something nice to show his love for me on Valentine's Day. With a heavy melancholy in her eyes, she looked at me. I know he'll never trust me again, and I'm sure it's over between us. That's why I thought he deserved this last gesture of respect before he leaves me. I passed the test and allowed his superposition. She explained the current situation clearly to me, but completely in vain for her ignorant lover. Carol ended the call, though Craig, still stunned, continued to babble nonsense in confusion. She tapped the screen a few times, then looked up at me, shrugged, and explained. I blocked him. Not that it means much to you right now, but I thought you should know. He could never replace you. Just a silly meaningless distraction on a boring evening alone in a hotel far from home. She stood up, wiped her eyes with the back of her hand, and looked at the envelope still lying on her side of the table. I'll help you to the car, she said quietly, resigned to the inevitable. As we carried my luggage to the garage, I reflected on how, if I hadn't tried to show Carol my love for her on Valentine's Day, their affair might have ended on its own and I would never have known that's when I remembered another law governing the universe. No good deed goes unpunished. Thank you for being with us and listening until the end. If you found it interesting, please subscribe, give us a like, and leave your comments. And we'll see you on the Cheating Secrets channel.